That's so cool. That's so cool. Yeah, somebody asked me so that you know it is, it's my 37th birthday. So um, I just started by lying. Anyway, hey, good morning, everybody. We are so glad that you are here this morning. Uh, so glad you're here. If you would, take your seats real quick. I've got several announcements for us to get through. So if you can take your seats quickly, that would be fantastic. Just a loud section over here. All right. Um, if you are a first-time guest, welcome. I'm Pastor Mike. I'm really glad you're here this morning. Thank you for joining us. And just in case you did not get an experience guide, our ushers have them. And so you're going to want one of those, I promise. If you'd raise your hand, they will bring it to you. Uh, inside the guide, a couple different things, information about the church. Uh, another thing that's in there is something called a connect card. That's a way for you to connect with us in multiple ways. If you're a first-time guest, we would love to know that. No hassle guarantee. Ain't nobody showing up at your front door or anything weird, uh, but we would like to communicate with you. So if you'd mark as a first-time guest, if you need to sign up for anything, small groups are going on, anything else, uh, you can do that. And then on the back, prayer requests. So there's prayer requests that you can fill. We've got a team that, that prays for you every Tuesday. Uh, we'd love to, to pray for you. And um, I've got a couple of announcements uh, that I'd like to go through real quick. Um, and here's one of the things I'd like to say, and if I could get everybody to be real quiet, I've got a, a pretty serious announcement I want to make for the family. It's a little family business here. Um, when we started this church, we started this church, and um, we had a youth group before we had a church. Uh, the youth ministry used to meet at our house. Uh, there was about eight kids that would meet in our living room, and, uh, and that was kind of the start of Church of the Lakes while we were, we were launching this crazy thing. And uh, besides my wife and I, there was one other adult that joined us for that small group uh, of, of kids for youth group, and uh, that was a gentleman by the name of Lynn Van Buren. And uh, I just wanted to communicate. I've had a number of you communicate with me, just, you know, is there going to be a memorial and all? We lost Mr. Lynn not that long ago. And, uh, and, and it, was, it was a bit of, of a struggle because when I talked to the family, the family said, no, we would just like to have a private family thing. And for many of us, that was a struggle because Mr. Lynn's like, man, a part of this church from the very beginning and, and all that kind of stuff. And so I just wanted to say to you this morning, it was a struggle, but Pastor Doug and I talked about it, kind of prayed about it. And we want to honor a family's wishes, if that makes sense in that process. But I thought we might just take a moment right now for us to pray as a church family and maybe have our moment of closing to kind of say goodbye um, and just do that in this moment. Would you bow your heads with me and let's just pray for a moment? Father, we thank you for the life of Lynn Van Buren. We thank you, God, for what he meant to so many in this place. That crazy laugh of his, always pranking around and, and picking on people. Uh, God, we celebrate that he was a part of our, our family here for so long. And in this moment, we just take a moment to commit his spirit to you. We know without a shadow of a doubt, I know, God, where he is. I know he's sitting with you. Uh, no more pain, no more struggle. And so we're so grateful this morning that we can have the reassurance that we know where he is this morning. And we just take this moment as a family to, to say we appreciate God, you letting him be a part of our life. And we now commit him to you. We look forward to the day that we are reunited with him in heaven. Now help those who have gone through a grieving process to do that in a healthy way. And we just ask that in the holy name of Jesus. And all God's people said... 
Amen. Thank you for those of you who didn't know Mr. Lynn for letting me do that for just a moment. Uh, you don't know who I'm talking about, but he was just a huge part of our church from the very, very beginning. So I uh, really felt the need to do that as, as a family. A uh, couple of quick announcements. Uh, one is you see baby bottles up here on the stage. Remember, we are supporting the Pregnancy Care Center over at the Christian Care Center. Man, they do an amazing work, a great job. And we've had baby bottles that you put change in or dollars or drop a check in, whatever you want. Everything that's collected goes to them, and it helps to support their budget for the year. Next week, baby bottles are due, all right? So I want you to know we had the prayer team starting this week, uh, praying for you that if you took a baby bottle and you don't bring it back, that you get bed bugs, okay? <laughs> all right, so if it happens, it's on you. It's, it's all your fault. Do you understand? No. In all seriousness, next week, if you would, please bring your baby bottles back for us to support them. That would be awesome. Put it on your calendar, March the 12th. Does anybody know what March 12th is? Spring forward, daylight savings time. Ah, spring forward, daylight savings time. So that's a Sunday morning. Make sure that you start to get that ready now. Parents, because you lose an hour, we do something fun in kids' ministry. I want to remind you now, it is Pajama Sunday. In other words, your kids can come in appropriate pajamas, right? Like, you know what I mean, right? But we do that so that the kids, uh, parents, you can have a little fun. All of our Lakes Kids people, they dress up, curlers and all kinds of crazy stuff in their pajamas. So it'll be Pajama Sunday and Daylight Savings Time on March the 12th. Uh, seniors, we want to remind you, Vintage Bible School is still available for you. We have a whole bunch of teenagers that have put a whole bunch of time into creating what is VBS but for seniors. So it's our teenagers doing it for the seniors. If you'd like to sign up for that, we'd like to have you be a part March 13th through the 15th. You can do that online or on a Connect card. And then I'm going to really embarrass some people because I didn't tell them I was going to do this, but hey, Freezes, come here for a minute, please. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I saw your face. Come on, Kristen. Come on, come on, come on. Um, I'm going to ask the Freezes to come up here for just a second. So uh, I love these kids, and I didn't tell them I was going to do this, and I knew Kristen would be like, oh, my gosh, are you serious right now? Anyway, come on, come on, come on. So uh, let me tell you a little bit. Uh, Luke is, uh, was a youth uh, of mine. I should have brought the picture of I've got a picture of him from middle school. Uh, he was really cutie um, and still thinks he is. But anyway, um, <laughs> But uh, Luke was one of my youth, and all, but also went to Leesburg High, graduated from Leesburg High here, and was on staff here for 11 years. Uh, now is an, uh, is an assistant principal at a middle school down in Claremont. We have him on loan. We're going to get him back. That's a whole other story. Um, yes. Kristen is also a member of the faculty here at Leesburg High School, so one of our teachers here at Leesburg High. So these are members of the church, but also <laughs> teachers that are part of. Quick story that I'll try to get through, because uh, we got a lot to try to cover today. Um, but uh, Mr. Randolph came to me and said, we want to do a teacher's lounge. And uh, the teacher's lounge is for uh, our teachers. And she has corrected me now and called it family lounge, which I like that. She'll explain that in just a second. Uh, but here's the story. So we want to put together this place for our teachers to go that's get away from the day. It's not orange and black. It's not school colors. Right? So it's a room. They've painted it this nice, like, blue that's kind of a calming blue. They're going to put, they've got a pool table. They're putting video game systems on 85-inch TVs, uh, sofas, chairs. I mean, just creating this, a dartboard, this space so that during your planning period, you can go get away. During your lunch, you can take your lunch and you can get. And so Mr. Randolph said, you know, I've got this idea. I want to do this for the teachers. And, and I said, great. We're in. We would love to try to figure out budget-wise what we could make happen. I'm talking about it at the gym, and a doctor friend of mine, um, who happens to be a Muslim, is not a believer, but a doctor friend of mine that's working out with me, hears us talking about this lounge, and he goes, this sounds good it's for the teachers, how much do you need? And I said, well, we'd like 10, maybe. 10,000 would be a great number, I think. And he said, okay, Florida Cancer Specialist is in for 5,000. And they sent a check to the church. Hold on, you're clapping too early, I'm not finished. So, so... <laughs> Tyler tells this story to somebody else in, in, the, in the community, and it's kind of like, you remember the Pay It Forward movie? Remember how the kids started something and it made everybody else want to be a part? Do you know I think that that's the way God is using Church of the Lakes right now? Right? It's, it's, it's a catalyst scenario. Anyway, he tells somebody else, they're like, we got to trust. We're in for $5,000, which means we have the whole $10,000. But I was like, but we don't get to play. That's not fun. Right? So anyway, um, in the process, and I'm joking, the Construction Academy of Kids has been building this for uh, the teachers. 
But here's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be stocking it this week with all kinds of food and everything else. And I want these guys just real quick to tell you a little bit about what this family lounge is going to mean. You love me for bringing you up here, don't You're you? You're so great. Be careful with that microphone. It's Ryan, so it's got a little twang so, to it. Oh, it's got a little twang to hey it. Hey, y'all. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, I did very politely and politically correct correct <laughs> our preacher um he was referring to it as a teacher lounge and we do own one of those here as a staff in building one we actually use it as our baby room and it's the boring we're gonna go make copies it's our mailboxes it's got bathrooms this room is the family lounge and that comes straight from mr randolph he's done an amazing job of really making our staff a family and it really does feel like that it's not cliche and it's not something we say like it's a oh my gosh i haven't seen you in 24 hours how was dinner last night kind of environment um so what's really exciting about this room is that it's really going to give us that opportunity to connect as a family and he wants us to actually bring our families so many teachers here on campus coach games in the afternoon or sports and we also have a night school program where about 10, 15 teachers have to stay, work all day. We got about an hour break. And then we also have to go work night school. And this room is gonna be the perfect place for us to just chill. It's not school colors. It's not Leesburg jackets. It's not Ace Cambridge. It's literally just, hey, be a family, chill on a couch, com compete in some darts, play some pool. Um, so what's super exciting and top of all of that amazing environment is that the ABF crew is going to give us some fresh made home good cookies and they're going to stock it with a bunch of um, non-perishable items and coffee because you all know we need that and all of the good treats and stuff. So when you're like me and you have to work night school and you bring your breakfast and your lunch but you forgot your dinner, you don't have to go to McDonald's and get a nasty McBurger. You can go get a hot diarrhea pocket. Diarrhea you said. pocket. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's going to be a fantastic opportunity. So as the staff, she said hot pocket in ABF, and I was really like McDonald's to a diarrhea pocket. That's not much different. But anyway, go ahead. you know, yeah. for teacher yeah. life. Yeah. Um, so we were it, we're so unbelievably stoked to have this opportunity because it yeah. really is a family. Um, but the assistant principal here can say it much better than I can because we have some cool people coming to, for the soft opening. Yeah, tell them about that. That's awesome. Yeah, um, just, oh, wow. Hey, twang, ring. Hey. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's an amazing opportunity um, from an education standpoint. Education is tough right now. It's tough to hire people. It's tough to keep people in the door. Um, this place can be very challenging, but having something like this is a great opportunity to get the best and the brightest. And, again, that's what we want to see. Um, as Pastor Mike talks about, we're seeing this community change. We're seeing this school change. Been around here forever. Yes, sir. Uh, and there's just something about, you know, I'm, I'm not here right now, but there's just something about this place that is changing. Um, and like I said, we told Pastor Mike this morning, actually the superintendent um, and their crew from Bradford County is coming Friday to tour this place and just learn a little about what Leesburg High School is doing. And again, the superintendent from another county is coming to Leesburg, Leesburg High School. So, yeah, come cool. on, come on, thank you guys, thank you. I know, I put you on the spot, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll put this one back for Ryan, where is Ryan's? Oh, it's over here. Um, I'm so excited about this, this opportunity, and, and, and I want y'all to hear something. Uh, Leesburg High School doesn't always have the best reputation, yes? Well, that's funny, because a whole superintendent and their family are, are coming to see what we're doing. Does anybody pay attention to what's going on there in the pro Do you hear what I'm saying to you? And, and that's, there's more to come, y'all. There's more to come. We, we didn't go into repentance mode today just to be repentant and just to go through some religious thing. It's because we need to be positioned to be who God has called us to be, and we're just getting started. Amen? We're just just getting started. All right, we got to get into teaching today, or I'm going to run way over, and uh, the children's ministry lady, she's, she'll have my head. All right. That's my wife. All right, let's pray real quick. Father God, you are so good. Wow. Just the time we've already spent in your presence today and the report of what's going on in the school and the opportunities we continue to have. God, speak to us now through your word. Let us push all the stuff aside, all the junk. Let us hear from you and your Holy Spirit give us revelation. We ask it in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Romans 12 and 2. Do not copy the behaviors and customs of this world, 
but let God transform you. Everybody out loud say, let God transform me. Let God transform me, me, right? We've got some pushback in that. Especially when we talk about relationships. Boy, we've been on a series and we're ending it today talking about relationships. And, 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 And when we say, let God transform me, that's tough when it comes to our relationships. But the scripture goes on, into a new person by changing the way I think, and then you will learn God's will for you, which is good, pleasing, and perfect. So we have been in this series that is focused on making our relationships, listen to me, good, pleasing, and perfect. Did you know you can have good, pleasing, and perfect relationships? I got two yeses. Come on, honestly, there's a number of us that go, eh, eh, maybe somebody else, right? But I need you to hear something, listen to me. We've been walking through this process. Week one, we talked about knowing God, that you and I cannot have a healthy relationship until we know the love and grace that God has for us, right? You cannot give what you do not have. Week two, we talked about covenant marriage. We've gotta make covenant marriage the goal for all of us, single, right, older, married, doesn't matter, because God has called us to be till death do us part people. I got two amens. Yeah, come on. We work off the idea of covenant, not contract. Week three, we said last week, we talked about speaking life. We have to constantly check our language to make sure that we are speaking in life. And this week, we're gonna talk about collision coverage. Anybody have collision coverage? You have collision coverage? Yeah, you should have collision coverage because the day that that fool runs into your car, you're gonna wish you had collision coverage. Anybody? Yeah, the day, the day that person runs into your car, the person you run into them, and now you're out of car and you're trying to figure it out, you better have some collision coverage. Well, how many of you know that in relationships, you are going to have some collisions? Anybody? How many of you had a collision this week? Guess what? If you didn't, you're going to have one this week. Welcome to church. Are you encouraged? Come on, the reality of life is we are a sinful people living on a sinful planet surrounded by sinful people and we're so surprised when collisions happen. Somebody gonna act a fool in your neighborhood this week. Somebody's gonna be silly at work, somebody's gonna do something, right? (laughs) How many of you know you're gonna have, all right, married people, how many of you know you're gonna have collisions? Oh, there you go. Now the young people are here and go, no, we're not. We're going to do it different. No, you ain't. No, you ain't. As a matter of fact, somebody said marriage is like a deck of cards. Starts with two hearts and a diamond. And by the end, you wish you had a club and a spade. Come on, somebody. That's funny. I don't care what you say. That's funny. Listen to me, conflict is inevitable, but God can transform us. So let me give you some practical. Here's some practical. Four causes causes of conflict. Let's talk about it. Four causes of conflict. Number one, poor communication. Poor communication. Many conflicts start small and is compounded by what we say in the conflict. Come on, somebody. How many have made, made it worse with your words? How many of you have made it worse with your temper? Right? We talked about this last week. We have gotten a little loose with our tongues in this country. Can I say this to you, honestly? I'm a little concerned about where we are as a nation. But the reason that I'm concerned about where we are as a nation is I think we've forgotten why our founding fathers felt like they needed to call us the United States of America. Why did they need to put that word in? Well, because they knew what we're saying this morning. They knew that collisions are inevitable, right? They know that conflict is inevitable. Did you know our system was built with there being two different sides? For those of us who are red and we hate the blue, and those of us who are blue and we hate the red, we're forgetting that's the way the Founding Fathers actually set it up. That we might actually try to balance each other out just a little bit. Right? Poor communication reminds me of the guy fighting with his wife, and he said something horrible to her. (laughs) He said, how can you be so beautiful and so stupid at the same time? And she said, well, allow me to explain. God made me beautiful, 
so you'd be attracted to me. And he made me stupid so I'd be attracted to you. <laughs> Men, don't try it. You're not equipped to win these battles. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Okay. Listen to me. Listen to me. Psalm 141 and 3. Set a guard over my mouth, O Lord. Anybody need to pray that prayer? Keep watch over the doors of my lips. Notice the response to conflict. Go to God first. Go to God first. I go to God and ask him to transform me by guarding my mouth. What's another cause of conflict? Number two is unfulfilled expectations. Matter of fact, this is the root of anger. Unfulfilled expectations. I want something and it doesn't happen the way I want it, so I get angry. Right? Unmet expect. I have a certain expectation. I, 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 my anger begins, the scripture says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Right? James 4, 1. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You want something, but you don't get it. I want a traffic-free 27. I want peace in my home. But I walk in and, Lord, have mercy. Right? I, <laughs> I want things to be easy. I want romance. Unmet expectations lead to anger. Anybody? And it says when you don't get that, the scripture goes on and it says you kill and covet, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. The verse goes on to say you don't have to because you, you don't have it because you didn't ask God. We're expecting from people, listen to me, we're expecting from people things that only God can give. Many of us are putting too much pressure on our relationships to give you what only God can give you. God will give you fulfillment. People can't do that. Your spouse can't do that. And if you're looking at him and expecting him to make you happy, and if you're looking at her and expecting her to make you happy, you got a problem. Collision is coming because they can't do that. They are sinners and they will fail you. Parents, listen to me. Stop expecting no conflict. You have a sinful child that you have been tasked to help to know God and to give them the likeness of Jesus. If you don't have conflict, you aren't parenting. Let me say it another way. If you don't have some friction, you're probably just facilitating their desires. Come on, this is part of the reality, right? This is going to create a person that expects everyone to respond to them if we do it that way. Another cause of conflict, number three, despising differences. Despising differences. It's amazing to me. You see a young couple and they're like, oh, you complete me. Oh, you complete me. You complete me. And it doesn't take very long before they go, you completely irritate me. <laughs> right? Right? Because the tingles wear off. You ever heard of the tingles? I like to call them the tingles. The tingles last two to three years. Two to three years you got the tingles. <laughs> right? And then you're like, good God, give me some space. Right? And that's when marriage really starts, in my opinion. That's, that's where covenant relationship really starts, from my opinion, is, is when it's no longer just fuzzies. Right? That it, it, it's the reality of, I choose to love you. Right, but we despise differences. My wife and I are so different. Anybody else look at your spouse and be like, oh my gosh. Right? Whew. You're hot and they're cold. Come on, somebody. You want to spend and they want to save. You want to spank, they want to show grace. Come on. Jen and I are so different, but can I remind you we get how important differences are on teams. On a football team, you don't want everybody to be 350 pounds, right? We need a few 350 pounders to push the line, right? We need a guy who's good with the ball and makes good, healthy decisions here. I need a little scat back in the back, a little fast little sucker that's hard to see when he comes through the line. I need a guy on the end that just can blaze and a guy over here who's 6'6 and can throw. We need variety, right? True in every team. 
Can I say this to you, that, that God has created you in such a way that we're not to despise differences. We're supposed to see those as, as the way that God works with us in the process. Do you know Abe Lincoln did something that I would love to see anybody even consider trying to do today? He took the dude that ran against him for president and put him on his cabinet. He took people from the opposite party and put it on his, why? Because he was wise enough to understand they are put there to balance me out. Do you know what that is? That's an act of humility. That's an acknowledgement that I don't have it all together. That's an acknowledgement of my sinful nature that I need somebody to balance me out. Look at Mark, and, and, and we as the United States, oh my gosh, if this doesn't speak to us, and if this doesn't speak to our homes, Mark 3 and 25, if a house is divided against its stuff, that house cannot stand. We've got to be the United States of America again, which means we've got to be careful about our communication and our words and how we're speaking to one another. Hate has no room in that. Man, let's have healthy conversations and healthy debate. Okay, I got to keep moving. What else brings conflict? Sin nature. <laughs> we're all sinners. There you go. Welcome to church. You just got called a sinner. Are you happy now? Right? We're all sinners. It's amazing how easily we apply grace to ourselves. Come on, somebody. Lord, thank you for your grace. Your mercies are new every morning. I know I just did that sin again for the 45th time, but I'm so grateful for your mercy. And then we walk out the house and see somebody, oh, for I am God. Right? We're, we're so quick to want mercy but not apply it. Romans 3 and 23, for everyone has sinned, we all fall short of God's glory. So I leave room for you to make mistakes. Some of you thought when I started it, I was going to help you fix the other person. When I, when you, some of you probably thought today when I said, we're going to talk about conflict, you're like, oh good, how do I fix her? And actually, I'm going to do the opposite. It's not about fixing the other person. Many people make this mistake, catch this, of bringing worldly business negotiations into personal relationships. If you want to do it the way the world, you're going to get worldly results, right? Resolving conflict is not about changing the other person. It's about letting God transform me. You cannot change the circumstance around you until you let God change what is going on within you. So there are a few different ways for us to solve conflict. Number one is my way, right? My way. It happens my way. I'm the dad. Line up. Submit. My way. We know how that goes. Here's another way. Your way. Okay, I'll take the high road. I'll be the passive one and just let it go your way. How many of you know that just leads to resentment, right? Frustration, resentment, that leads to unhealthy places. So we think the third one is probably the best option. How about halfway? Well, we'll come halfway. So half the time you get what you want, half the time I get what, that's 50% of the time you're ticked off, right? Could I submit to you there's a fourth way? It's God's way. It's God's way. But you can't know God's way until you go ask him and listen for him to tell you how to do it. It requires relationship with him, right? If I first go to him and let him do a work inside of me, relationship conflicts can be solved much easier. Can I suggest this to you? If you're in the middle of a thing right now with your, with your marriage partner, if you're, if you're in a thing right now with a friend, a relationship, can I suggest this? Table the issue for a moment and you go draw near to God. And ask God to transform your heart and see what happens to that conflict. See, it's, it's not about fixing the other person, changing the solution, right? But it's the reality of changing something inside of me. I'll read you this verse out of Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. There's a time for everything. For those of you who are old enough, you'll remember the birds, you'll remember this song. There's a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. And then it goes on and it says these words. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones. What? what, is, what is it? Time, time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones. What does that mean? Well, there's a choice how you respond. You can scatter stones. You can pick up the stones and throw them. 
right? I can, I can pick up the stones and start throwing them at that other person. Or I can gather stones, and when it talks about gathering stones in the Bible, it talks about building an altar that I might go to God. Scattering is about throwing the stones. Gathering is about going to God in the process and saying, God, help me. Change my heart. Help me to understand what it is that you would want out of this. As a matter of fact, there's a story in the Bible that has this, and I'm going to go through it really fast. But, but there, there's, a, there's a guy, and, and his name is Jacob. It's in Genesis 28. You can read the story for yourself. He goes, and he's going to try to get a wife. And he goes to a family member, and he's got, he says, I want to marry your daughter. The guy says, cool, work for me for seven years, right? He works for, for them for seven years. Marriage day comes. He goes into the marriage bed. When he wakes up in the morning, it's the older daughter. It's not the daughter he wanted. I got a lot of questions, I'm just saying. <laughs> I got a lot of questions. I'm going to leave that alone. I ain't got time, but I got a lot of questions. Anyway, he gets up in the morning. He goes, it's not the daughter I want, right? And the guy goes, uh, well, you're going to have to work for me for another seven years if my other daughter, because it's our custom to give the older daughter first. So he works for another seven years. This goes on and on and on until he just can't take it anymore. This guy just keeps messing with him, changing everything, changing his, his wages. So finally, he packs up his family, everybody else, and they run. They leave. Father-in-law is coming after them. And this is what Genesis 31, 46 says. It said, he said to his relatives, catch this, gather some stones. So they took stones and piled them in a heap. And there they ate by the heap. What did he do? He built an altar. He built an altar and said, God, I've been trying to do it my own way for so long. How do you want me to deal with this? And can I say this to you? Today's message in a sentence is this. Catch me. Before you ever try to resolve conflict with someone else, God's got to first do a work inside of you. If I go to God first, that other person doesn't even have to be involved for me to find peace. Did you catch that? If I go to God first, that other person doesn't even have to be involved for me to find peace. This might be the most powerful thing some of you hear today. Are you ready? Some of you have been trapped by yourself. You have trapped yourself in a conflict because you have said, I could never be right with, in my heart or with that person until they fill in the blank. You know what you just did? You just trapped yourself to their behavior. You just, you, you have now put that person and the situation in charge of your peace and happiness. Can I say this to you this morning? Conflict cannot continue without your participation. Conflict cannot continue without your participation. I'm going to let God transform me. So sometimes people will say this. Hey, Pastor Mike, bring it to us deep. Like, I want something deep, man. I want something deep. Are you ready? Here's deep. God ain't Santa Claus. He's not just some jolly guy to climb up on his lap and ask what you want. Are, are, are you hearing what I'm saying to you? No, 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 no. Galatians 2 and 20 says this. I am crucified with Christ. I die to myself. It matters not what I want. It matters not what I think. It matters not what I would like. I die to myself. Can I remind you, dead people don't get mad, jealous, or offended. You know why? They did. If you get mad, jealous, or offended, you might not be dead. In other words, you might not have died to yourself. You might not have gotten to the place. Why did we do this repentance thing earlier today? Because every once in a while, I think it's healthy for us to go to that deep place, to that real place of going, God, I messed up, and, and I, I need you, and, and, I, and I need to get very real with my stuff, right? If you came here the morning, this morning and you got stuff, hey, welcome. There are some really jacked up people sitting around you right now. There's a really jacked up dude talking to you. Ain't, ain't nobody playing games here. Because we're a church or whatever, this is, we, we are only holy because Jesus' blood makes us righteous. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Jesus is the only reason in that process. But can't, conflict can't continue if I don't participate. 
Even if the other person doesn't come around, you can have peace. Even if the other person doesn't change their heart, what, what if that person never comes around? What if they never apologize, never make restitution? You never have peace because you've based it upon them? I think that God would say to us this morning, come to me and let me fix you. Come to me and find your worth and meaning. Come to me and be fulfilled. Come to me and I will transform your heart and give you peace, even if the other person is still antagonistic in the situation. He is our source. Conflict cannot continue without my participation. So how do we deal with conflict? We build an altar. We build an altar. We go to God. And we keep going back to the source. We ask him to change me. Most of us are praying for God to change them, and we're not seeing any results, and we wonder why. While you're building an altar, while you're going back to God and asking him to change your heart, here are a few practical tips. Let me end with this, and we're going to close. A few practical tips that are very different from the world's way. Number one, I will respond and not react. I will respond and not react. Look at Ephesians 4 and 26. In your anger, do not sin. That, I like that verse. Do you know why I like that verse? Because it acknowledges that I'm going to get angry. <laughs> anybody else get angry? Come on, anybody else here? Anybody else struggle with the driving thing like I do? Come on, anybody? Whoa, we need a deliverance service in here. Okay. Right? No, 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 but in your anger, don't sin. Like, you're going to get angry, but don't react. Don't, don't cause pain. Do not let the sun go down while you're still angry. So let me give this to you. You ready? I'm going to give you what I would call a pre-fight plan. A pre-fight plan. It's not in your notes. If you want to write it down, you can write it down. Whether this is for your marriage, this is with kids, this is with coworkers, whatever, I think this works. Here's a pre-fight plan. You need a plan before you go into the fight. Number one, never put it off. How many of you know you can put it off for a time period to collect yourself so that you don't react, that you respond, but how many of you know stuff just festers, it doesn't go away? Right? You can't just put it off and pretend like it's going to go away. Next one is never call names. And don't get me wrong, they might give you some good ideas. But never call names, right? Never raise your voice. Yelling never works. Never works. Not to solve it in a godly way. It's a worldly way of solving it. In other words, it's dominance. It's I win by power, but it's not gonna get us where we are. A harsh, a harsh word stirs up anger, scripture says. Never get historical. I didn't say hysterical. I said historical. Man, I'm trying to help you out here. You better amen me, all right? Right, because men and women are way, my, women remember everything. Come on, somebody. Right? I will say something, and my wife will go, that's just what you said last time. Like, last time, what are you talking about? When did I say that? 13 years ago when you were wearing those brown shoes, and you had that little button-up shirt on. Button-up shirt on. Woman, I don't know what shirt I'm wearing right now. What are you talking about? Right? Listen to me. Don't get historical. Right? It's not going to help anything. Never say never or always. Never say never or always. That's not true. That's not true. It might feel like it, but it's not true. And here's a big one for my married couples. Never threaten divorce. Never. I'm with you to the end. Till death do us part. Here's another thing you can do while you're building an altar and you're working on your conflicts. Number two, I will focus on the good things in you. Can I ask you to make a decision every day to focus on the good? Let me read Philippians 4, 8 to you in a very different way maybe than you've ever heard it before or you've ever even thought about it before. It says this, finally, brothers, whatever is true, 
Come on, you're looking at that relationship going, ain't nothing true about him, he's a dirtbag. No, there's something true. Whatever is true, come on. Whatever is noble, he's not noble. Noble? Pfft. Listen, what at, find it, it's there. There's something to be talked about. Whatever is pure. Whatever is lovely. There's something lovely about her, man. I know, I know you're looking at her going, ain't nothing lovely right now, woman, woo! No, there's something, find it. Whatever is lovely. Whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent. Do you hear the almost desperation that I'm reading this in the, it's, it's a different context? Man, if, 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 if anything is excellent. Thank, thank you for going to work today. I appreciate you going to work today. Anything excellent or praiseworthy, listen to this. Think about such things. If you spend all day at work thinking about what he lacks, you're gonna come home in a certain mindset. If you spend all day rehearsing the bad things she said or the things she's done, what kind of a heart do you think you're gonna have when you walk through the door? Think on these things. Do you know what the verse goes on and says? Catch this. And the God of peace will be with you. Anybody here want some peace? Then whatever is good and whatever is true, and think about these things. Really hard to do that on social media. Just saying. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? So start the day at the altar. Instead of sto the stone throwing contest, some of us flip on the news first thing in the morning and the stone throwing contest is on. Come on, y'all. The Democrats today, the Republicans. I mean, where do you, you're not going to be in peace. The God of peace will not be with you because you're thinking of things that are crazy in the process. Before anything ever happens in a day, I make a choice to respond, not react. I make a choice to focus on good things. Marriages need that. Our country needs that. Our kids, our coworkers, our friends need that. Plenty of bad things to talk about. Come on, y'all. But what is good? Because I want the God of peace to be a part of my day today. If I do that, his peace will bring me to number three. I will apply God's grace to others. I will apply God's grace to others. Amazing how quickly we, we throw stones. Look at Romans 12 and 19. Do not take revenge, dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. I use that all the time. Can I just be honest? I'll be this transparent. Maybe y'all think this is really unholy, whatever. When I see somebody, I'm like, you're a jerk. And then I think, God's gonna get them. I don't have to. And maybe you think that's like not so nice. You're like, you're hoping for them to get begotten. But it says leave room for God. God's gonna make things right in the end. God's gonna make just in the end. The jerk that, that cut me off on 27 yesterday, happened on 20, yesterday on 27. They cut me off and I was like, okay, God, I don't know what's going on with him. I don't know what's going on with his day. His wife just told him he's leaving him something. So whatever it is, bless him today and calm me down that I know you're gonna make all things just in the end, right? And then the dumb stuff all day long that takes us to these weird, crazy places. Leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay. God will fix it. He'll fix it. He'll fix it. I don't care how drastic it is. Says the Lord, on the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed them. If he's thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on their head. Yes! No, that's not what it means. You don't get to set them on fire. They are not Joan of Arc. That's not what this means. You know what that means? It means your behavior there was a custom that they had of burning, burning coals and holding it over their head, and it was symbolic of burning away the bad thoughts. Your behavior will cause the bad thoughts in them to be burned away. You will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with what? With good. 
God is offering us transformation. But you can only give what you have. So number four, and we're closing. I will remember God's grace to me. Can I challenge you to periodically review how gracious God has been to you? Man, anybody else like me, I look back and just go, what in the world? I remember when I started for the very first time after many, many years, touching base with some of my fraternity brothers from Florida State. So Mike, what are you doing now? I'm a pastor. <laughs> That's hilarious. No, really, what are you doing? Because they knew Mike. Right before Jesus got a hold of my heart. Before Jesus began to transform me to trying to be better. And I, I got a long, long way to go. Anybody else? But I'm a lot further where than where I used to be. Anybody grateful for God's grace today? Woo. Last verse. 1 John 4 and 8. The person who refuses to love doesn't know the first thing about God. Because God is love. So you can't know him if you don't love. This is how God showed his love for us. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. This is the kind of love we are talking about. Not that we once upon a time loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to clear away our sins and the damage they've done to our relationship with God. My dear, dear friends, if God loves us like this, we certainly ought to love each other. God, help us do that today, amen? Let's pray, God. Let's pray. Father, we acknowledge how badly we do conflict sometimes. We're selfish in it. We want what we want. We desire what we desire. We're asking, God, would you work on our hearts today? Would you change our hearts and get us ready for the revival we think is coming? We've come today and we've repented about some things. We've now been challenged by your Holy Spirit to consider conflict and how we're gonna deal with that this week. It's coming, it's, the collisions are coming. So God, help me go to your altar each morning and begin by forgiving before it ever comes, because it's coming. Loving before love is needed. And God, I pray over our marriages that are here this morning. For any of them that are struggling, for them that them are fighting on the way here this morning. Right now, God, that they would Go back to till death do us part. We're gonna do this together. I'm gonna to love you. I'm gonna love you with all I've got. So guide our hearts and our words, transform us that we might love them the way you love us. And we ask it in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. amen. We're gonna close service with worship. If you'd like to stay in worship, feel free to do so. If you're not gonna stay in worship, we ask you to go very, very quietly so those who are still worshiping uh, can continue in their worship. So if you would stand to your feet. Uh, don't forget, next week starts Life Step 1. We'd like to have you come join us in Life Steps. Um, you guys have a great week. We'll see you next week. Thanks, man. Stop.